superconductor. No, no, he hasn't done oh, that yet. No, no, don't confuse that. Oh, okay. He's just a standard low-temperature superconductor. Standard super low-temperature temperature superconductor. Okay, he hasn't gotten to the nanotech yet. I, okay, we I should mention he, that Yeah, a well, we bit will later. mention it. He's a standard, very ultra, you know, cryogenics, which is a disadvantage. But he's saying that certain kinds of super, in the thin films, these superconductors, it incre amplifies the coupling between electromagnetic radiation and gravity radiation in the, at the microwave, fr high frequency gravity wave radiation. And that so you can, you can either uh, transform micro electromagnetic microwaves into uh, mi microwave frequency uh, gravity waves or vice versa. Hmm. So it's a way of detecting high frequency gravity waves. Of course, the trick would be, it'd be nice if we could do it for low frequency waves. It turns out what Kip Thorne and the Caltech and the MIT, the Lisa LIGO group, they're doing very low frequency. Uh, uh, Ray Chow was talking about uh, microwave frequencies, a lot higher. But you know, uh, ideally, you want to do it throughout the entire spectrum. Now, uh, Ray Chow is actually doing experiments in this right now at the new campus uh, Merced, the new University of California campus Merced. We'll see what happens. Now, in addition to this, as uh, I think you found, you found the paper, Kim, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, there's been some recent evidence <laughs> of. Uh, Using Ultra nano, high temperature super can possible. Yeah, like twelve hundred degrees Fahrenheit. Eighteen hundred and fifty degrees Fahrenheit. Eighteen hundred fifty degrees Fahrenheit. Using degrees, uh, carbon nanotubes. Centigrade. Using carbon nanotubes, and it's also a thin film. What's called maybe what's called anionic an anion effect. It turns out, quantum physics in two dimensions of space, what's called quantum wells, is very different from quantum physics in three dimensions of space, and uh, so the idea is to combine what Ray Chow is doing, but use these very high temperature superconductors and that to build a, uh, like a flying saucer, like a spacecraft with whose, whose spherical, whose uh, fuselage is made out of a very high uh, temperature uh, superconductor so that when it goes into reentry and things like that, it will, the, when the sun, you know, when it's getting, you know, uh, in the sunlight where the, the temperature gets very high, when it's direct sunlight, things like that, that the thing stays a superconductor. And the, I, the hopefully the idea is that this enhanced coupling between gravity waves and electromagnetic waves, and what we really want is to do at a very low frequency, that's another problem, because we want to really do static fields as well. If we could do, you know, if we could do, if we can do... that That's traversable wormholes. Then. That's traversable wormholes, you see, and, and it's also warp drive. Right. It's also warp drive. Well, so I mean, if you can trick. do one, could, wouldn't the other... Well, I, that, that gets us now to the whole UFO data. And this is where, you know, uh, the, the professional debunk is right away accused of being a crank and a crackpot for taking the data seriously. Uh, you know, I don't want to get into that right now. But the point is, I do happen to know that uh, very high up in the United States uh, intelligence community and also in the British intelligence community, the Russian intelligence community, uh, China, that, you know, people... Uh, People on the inside actually do take the information seriously, even though the debunkers on the outside debunk it. Maybe the debunkers on the outside debunk it because they're being paid by the intelligence, because you know, people don't want really the truth about all this stuff coming out. But in any case, we're working on it, and uh, there is a serious interest in it. These are meta materials. What they what they were commonly okay now okay now another thing now, now okay yes now another that's a separate issue okay so there are three different lines of this the Ray Chow gravity radio approach in which uh, he says superconductivity can enhance the coupling between electromagnetic microwaves and high frequency gravity waves. That's one approach. Then there's the Chinese guys, uh, whoever they're from, uh, in Mexico, I think, uh, the nanotube, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, bucket, the bucky tube enhancement right. of high temperature, temperature. Of, of superconductivity in a thin film effect. You see both, Ray Chow needs a thin film, and these guys are saying thin film, high temperature superconductivity what Frank Wilczek called anionic superconductivity, perhaps. And then uh, there's this uh, metamaterial stuff. Now, the metamaterial stuff is where you structured, you just, uh, you create like artificial lattices on a fairly, uh, maybe uh, like micron uh, uh, scale. And what happens there in metamaterials, they want to combine all three of these things. Right, right. Okay. I was just going to say what that. Happens, in metamaterials, what happens, you get a negative index of refraction. And with negative index of refraction, you can do all kinds of uh, very interesting uh, lensing effects and maybe even stealth, uh, you know, like invisibility cloaks, like in Star Trek, stuff like that, those kinds of effects. And, uh, but also, you get what's called both negative electric permittivity and negative magnetic permeability. And once you have that, then you may be able to get negative 
coherent electromagnetic field energy density. Which would create a traversable wormhole. Now, if you now there are two different ways. Now you have to do now. It turns out this is different from the zero point energy effect that I was talking about before. It's not a dark energy effect. This is a coherent electromagnetic field effect. Just it happens to work just the opposite. Turns out there you a negative a negative coherent electromagnetic field configuration will also cause anti-gravity. Okay? It's not the same as the dark energy effect. It's a different because the dark energy effect is a positive random zero point energy fluctuation effect. It turns out that there's what's called the W parameter. And this, the critical thing about the W parameter is a critical thing where W is minus one third. If W is less than minus one third, then positive electromagnetic energy density will create anti gravity. But if W is greater than one third, then Negative electromagnetic field energy density will create anti gravity. So it depends what this W parameter is. Now, it turns out with this metamaterial effect, W is greater than minus one third. In fact, W is like maybe like plus one third. Are there people actually working on that? No, I don't think so. I think I've suggested it, but uh, you know, I don't know. I've, I've suggested to people I know in the intelligence community and the guys like James Woodward, you know, a few other, Al Putoff, and we'll see. But no, I don't think this idea hasn't gelled yet in most people's minds. Okay. But the point is that. If we can make a nano, a metamaterial thin film, which, which has both a, le a coherent electromagnetic field energy in it of negative energy density. It's also a high temperature superconductor. It's also a high temperature superconductor. So you have the Ray Chow thing coming in. We combine all these effects together uh, in this fuselage uh, material. <laughs> then so, we, so it's not unreasonable to, to uh, conjecture that, that conjecture. the extraterrestrials... Already done, they've done it. They've already done it. They've done it. And if they, if they only have this technology, this, this high-temperature superconductive metamaterial technology in the, in the constructed fuselage, they have the warp drive, and that would explain how they're able to do high-speed hairpin turns without any G-force inside the ship. And I guess, would, would, that, would that eliminate the necessity to create an actual physical traversable wormhole? You could just use the ship itself? The ship yeah, itself use the warp drive. Uh, would, would, warp would drive basically, itself. yeah, would it's, be the warp. It's like a wormhole would be, without a wormhole. Yeah, the Star the warp Trek drive warp itself. drive. Yeah. You don't and have to construct both it. Both may have, but you may be able to do both. You may be able to do both. There's actual, uh, some observational evidence of, stuff, of ships coming through wormholes that look like wormholes. You know, this is all the... Uh, the uh, Bob Bigelow stuff. Is, and right, I, right. You, the Skinwalker but, Ranch book. Skinwalker Ranch book. Things. There's other other evidence as well out on YouTube. All kinds of stuff. We don't know what is real. Whether it's CGI. Who the hell knows? But there's a lot of you know. There's a lot of a uh, 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 lot of uh, noise out there, and you have to sort of filter through it. But what's interesting? What you said, Bob Bigelow, the billionaire, is putting in fifty what fifty million dollars. Oh to yeah, UFON. Bob Bigelow. Bob Bigelow is uh, Bigelow Space Systems or, or in uh, Las uh, Vegas. In Las Vegas is is putting in fifty million dollars to hire a uh, rapid reaction strike team for MUFON to go and investigate. Yeah, you should uh, be in that. Uh, important sightings as they happen. So we'll see. So it's all kind of coming together. The point is, if all these... Yeah, there does seem to be a convergence here. There's a convergence. There's a convergence. Oh, just as a post-mortem on the meeting that we had, that we talked about defense contracts, so far nothing has happened with that. And part of the reason nothing's happened with that is that uh, uh, the particular approach being advocated there, remember, I never bought it, uh, is, is not really credible. And so that, and plus the financial meltdown, this was before the financial meltdown, makes it even... Even worse. Lack of funding. Lack of funding in general, but even if the physics was good, there'd be problems right now. Uh, but uh, so we'll see what happens. The only one who's really funding this stuff is Bob Bigelow, as far as I know. Uh, uh, well, there may be some black projects too. Interesting. Yeah.